so you wrote to me recently saying you had some beautiful results. You want to tell me, but then you yes. tell me just a few minutes ago before we got on Zoom here that it's ended up being some kind of an issue for you. So why don't you start with the beautiful results and then we'll move in. Yeah. Did that work? Yes, absolutely. Because that's okay. how it started. Okay. So basically, I um, I uh, have a client. Uh, we didn't have many. Yes. We didn't have many what? Uh, okay, I can continue. Uh, we didn't have many sessions. So uh, we had about four sessions and we were working on his sadness. He had a very strong sadness. And um, uh, actually, um, uh, uh, about, I think, on the fourth session, uh, uh, there was always a guidance. Uh, after the session, I was always asking if there is some homework for the, for the client for the week, you know. And this week, he had a, a homework uh, as a guidance from Unseen Therapist to create moments of joy, to, to do it himself, try to arrange things that would be moments of joy. And... Uh, this homework was so powerful for him that it really opened his heart a lot. Uh, he was on a trip and he came back quite different. And uh, now our next session, um, there was a guidance that I, before, before the session I asked, is there anything I should know? And there was a guidance that I need to ask him that he needs to make a choice. Uh, or we can continue with soft sessions, chatting, you know, like uh, kind of nice and everything. Or uh, he can go straight to the point of what needs to be healed. But after that, there won't be many sessions because he will be already on his mission. He will be very guided to, to do something that is his purpose. Okay. All right. And, and I asked him, of course, what do you want? Which, which path do you choose? And he said, well, of course, I want the purpose. I would love to know what I should, I should do. Uh, he's a very, very smart guy in, in IT department. And he always felt that he, he didn't really kind of do anything special. And uh, so that's what we did. There was a guidance to specific events, what we should work on. And so that was one session. And then we did another session the day after. I think it was some kind of guidance because uh, w before we had a break because of holiday. And this next session, the next day, was the session where it happened. Uh, this, the healing already started in the meditation before the session. When we were meditating, I had guidance to uh, not to kind of you know, ask unseen therapist to call me down to prepare me for the session, but to put healing on him, which never happened to me before that, no, 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 go to him, give him the, you know, kind of work on him already uh, in the meditation. And he was like shining and, you know, very powerful. And there was guidance to specific events. We did those um, specific events. Uh, they were mostly tense. So like Most, 10. Mostly 10. Tens to begin tens. with. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 10, 10, 10, 9, you know, very strong uh, uh, events. And uh, during the healing, there was this, I had this vision that angels take him up in the sky, in the heaven, whatever you want to call it. And there he was kind of dealing with some kind of godlike force. You know, it was like not from this earth. And I, I didn't know he, he was just happening up there. And when he was back, he came back kind of like a red ball, uh, radiating love. And since that moment, I just, you know, I couldn't um, kind of like kind of just continue with the session because it was overwhelming. Basically, this energy that entered him I, I, it was the only kind of spiritual experience that I had. Wait, 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 wait. I, I missed a word. Allergy that entered him or energy? Ener energy, energy. Okay. So he was yes. like, like a red ball, but good, good red yes. ball radiating and so on. Love. 
Yeah, yeah. okay. Radiating all right. love. Yeah, all right. And basic and basically in this moment, I kind of realized what is the biggest power in the world, and that is purity. Uh-huh. That this energy in him, it was so pure. It I I kind of only can imagine that it's like a glimpse of what Jesus would be. You of know, what, the, of what Jesus, Jesus would be. Yeah, yeah, okay. All right. Well, there would be Jesus, and there's in history, there are many spiritual masters, Buddha being another one. And so exactly, on. exactly, you know. exactly. But like the, the 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 shocking part, the most kind of striking was his purity. He was like this energy is so pure, like and it's like uh and it was so strong in many ways. Uh I was just touched by the beauty of it, mostly. And then also, in a way, ashamed of my own impurities when I was kind of uh, in, in contrast with this, with this purity. Uh, right. It was just overwhelming. Uh, and and I, I started crying uh, just out, you know, with this awe and, and respect and uh you know absolute kind of overwhelm but mostly respect you know it was i felt like i want to just bow you know in front of this 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 beauty this 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 love this but purity is like the the best word i can find you know and i believe that like i started crying and i i think my first words were i'm sorry the session wasn't better you know Oh, well, let me stop you a second, just so I understand this. Okay. So here you are with unseen therapist help. And this fellow is now really graduating into a purity, as you call it. Okay. I would, um, if I'm hearing it right, I would define that to be something like my own spiritual experience in 1988 that you've read about and, and so on. You're in the arms of the creator. I, I see you're crying now, but th th let me talk a minute, and then I want to get to that. Okay. So here he is doing this. You haven't done this yourself, and I think I'm hearing, but you correct me, okay? I think I'm hearing, oh, I really failed here because I didn't get this myself. He's getting something spectacular. No, no, oh. All right. No, I think it was just that uh, contrast, like with the contrast with this purity, I understood that there were moments in the session when I was adding my own personality or uh, my own comments, you know, that I understood the power that we are dealing with. And it's so pure that we should just be completely transparent. We shouldn't be here. You know, that. I felt that I didn't respect enough this energy by adding my own maybe, you know, kind of comments or wanting to, just as a therapist, some kind of, you know, maybe being, um, uh, uh, say something that may be smart or, you know, necessary, you know. And in this moment, I saw maybe there were very tiny moments, you know, no one would even notice them. But this purity, it just completely like breaks your system, you know, dismantles your uh, constructions of ego, of protection, of, of trying to build some identity, you know, it just dismantled everything that I, I, I was, you know, as in that session. Okay, now, thank you. Beaut beautifully said, beautifully done. But let me get behind it a bit. The tears I was looking at a few minutes ago and seem to be there even now, okay, um, are not a sadness of your own. It's more like, that is so beautiful, I have to cry. Now, did I say it right? It's. I think it was a mixture of two. It was definitely the, and of course now I, 
it's 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 it becomes a memory it, it becomes some kind of mental explanation but at the time it was just pure experience uh it's you know difficult to explain it the best way yes. but uh, but uh, it was a mixture of crying for two reasons first was um i'm so humbled by this by this purity, by this force, it's like the, the most powerful force on earth, on in the world, is, is this purity, the pure love, you know, absolutely flawless, like crystal, uh, you know, that's one. And then second was crying, which I, I don't know, but that, that was my reaction, that my own impurities uh, became so visible to me, you know, the tiniest, uh, not pure intention uh, became huge, right? Compared to this purity, so I felt yeah. ashamed of it. You know, like and and somehow I don't, I didn't think it, but I was say I just said I'm so sorry that the session wasn't better, that this power deserved absolute best. Yes. Okay. I'm so glad. I'm so glad you brought this up. I am just so glad you had this experience. Okay. In this dream, as we call it, which is not our reality, you touched into reality with this man. Okay. His, you call it purity, but that's, I'm going to call it the real reality. He's in touch with God, the unseen therapist, Jesus, whatever you want to call it. I'm saying that right. I I felt that energy. Uh, what happened after is 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 I, I approve of that. I believe, but I I believe that I saw it more than him. Okay, so uh, okay, so so you're observing this. He isn't apparently to you getting it like you're seeing it. Yeah. Uh, I I mean the results were gr like groundbreaking. It was uh, from ten to zero. Uh, all of all of the emotions, all the perceptions changed, but drastically. You know, from feeling completely unloved, alone, uh, 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 not trusting. You know, defensive. To nine on, I love my mother. Uh, on, I love. I I feel loved. You know, like a complete opposite. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, so All right. uh, I, I, I saw the, the force behind it, but he experienced the, the results in, in the way of uh, completely shifting and okay. uh, in the perspective of, of the specific events. And on the other side of that, as you're observing all of this, you're saying to yourself, oh, I can now see my impurities. Yes, I have some resentful thoughts. Yes, I have some guilt. I wish I hadn't done something once upon a time like everybody else on this planet, by the way. All the rest of your clients, including this client, okay? <laughs> <laughs> um, and you, so by contrast, now, always correct me, okay? I, this is what I'm hearing. By contrast, oh, all the stuff stuff all my impurities oh i'm ashamed of them why would i do that why did this happen and why did i think this and and all of that and i i'm impure and i'm still angry at somebody someplace for whatever they they did okay or didn't do or, or all of that okay yeah all exactly. right exactly exactly that well i have a comment would you like to hear it always <laughs> Join the parade, my dear. Okay. I got to that state, I think this your client was in, myself, and as you know, in 1988, briefly. Jaw dropping. In the meantime, or after that until now, and that was eight, 88 until we're, you know, 2023 or something, okay. A whole bunch of years. I've yet to get back there, although I'm trying. Okay. And so, but I have had impurities myself 
Because yes, there's people that irritate me and I've done things I wish I hadn't done. And I'm, uh, uh, all of which are compared to that state, impurities. I think the difference between what you are doing with this experience and what I do with this experience is that you call it impurity, shame on me. I called it errors, wake up. Mm, okay. Well, it's, I don't know if that does it for you all <laughs> with one little sentence, yeah. but it's a reframe, if you will. To me, to me, my impurities and those impurities of everybody else I know, okay, um, are just things we keep working on to look beyond. They are simply errors. We've made a big error. This is you know, all part of my Unseen Therapist book and so on. Yeah. In that we be we believed ourselves into a separate state when we were actually into this oneness state, which I'm understanding your client was echoing or radiating. Okay. And you're not doing that. And by comparison to that, you're going, oh, shame on me. I should know better. A whole bunch of shoulds. Okay. I'm on point. Yes, yes, uh, uh, absolutely. It, it was the, the mixture of the uh, completely being kind of thrown off my chair uh, by, I think the most shocking part was that uh, I understood that this is the biggest power in the world. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. It, you know what I mean? That we think power is force, it's strength, but this, this is so like, like I think the biggest kind of element is that it completely uh, dismantles your constructions because well, it's so uh, like the purity is just, it, you, you just can't do anything. It just, it, it just dismantles everything. Well, it, another way to say it. Okay. Again, correct me. Mm-hmm is that it allows you to wake up from the dream and see the reality. Yes. And by comparison, who needs this? Uh, yes. I think maybe I didn't get this far yet. Uh, I think that what I was the most kind of uh, shocked by, that it's a little bit like uh, um, the, the, the fact that it's the biggest power that we kind of think that because actually with this client, I had a feeling from the very beginning that um, uh, th there was this um, relationship with a business partner that he had. And I asked unseen therapist just to kind of show me what is a relationship between them, you know, like what some clues. Yes. And I saw I saw him. As a, a very like his partner, um, kind of as as something, and him as a very small cherry seed in a way, like that kind of size. Cherry but, seed, yeah, okay, yeah, uh -huh. yeah, just that kind of size, you know, yeah. that kind uh -huh. of like little little seed. But inside the seed, there is everything. Like I tried to explain to him that. The message is that there's potential in you, that there's nothing you can't do on this uh, in this world. You have such potential. Like I, I, I tried to put it in business because that's what he does. He's very successful uh, in business, but it was just like shocking that if you just open this up, you can do anything. This whole list that we always do, oh, if I could do anything, how would I change the world or something like this? You can do that. Yeah. Like, yeah. Literally, like the potential is in you. So uh, I believe that uh, so the subject of power, of influence, of, of some kind of, um, you know, inspiring others was on the, sub on the table with him. But this experience showed me that there is no bigger motivation than being this pure love it well it's, we it's, we it just puts yeah. you on your knees yeah 
We have what we think are bigger motivations, many of us anyway, making so much money, having a great, you know, romantic partner, uh, you know, they have the but, big but house. I meant, uh, but I meant motivating others. Okay, well, you all know, right. In terms of influence of motivating others, we think that, oh, you need to be strong, you need to have the character, the charisma. No, this is the bigger, biggest inspiration, biggest in influence, motivation, being this purity. Because you will, because you will, everything. Yeah, because you will radiate it. Exactly. Yeah. You're nodding your head. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Um, and there's nothing people won't do for you. You know, in a way, if you're this, there's nothing people won't do for you. But in the in the purest way, you know, when you want to create something, when you radiate this, yeah, okay, there's no bigger motivation. Okay, so let's. I just want to explore something with you, and thank you. This is very, very, very helpful. Okay, I want to go back a couple thousand years when, as we understand it, Jesus walked around. Okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> someone who I who. Um, well, in his own word, which is in A Course in Miracles, but uh, he discovered who he really was. Okay? Not a human being running around with arms and legs and, you know, all of that. He got out of this dream, this illusion of being separate. He recognized who he really was, the purity of it all, and became pure. He's also telling us, by the way, if we're listening, that we are the same as he is. Now, that's going to cut across some religious beliefs, I think, but we are the same as he is. We just haven't recognized it yet. And here you have an opportunity. You did it. You recognized it in someone else. Now, the thing I want to follow on from that is this idea that you and I and anyone else has all this power. We're not recognizing it. So we're not using it. We're not believing in it until you have an experience like you're, you've had. Okay. Um, but one argument, I just want to ask you about the one argument about all of that is our biggest fear. Some would argue this, okay, our biggest fear is recognizing how powerful we really are. There's a fear, there's a resistance somehow to recognizing, oh, how powerful we really are, and, and hiding from that within a body which is limited all over the place okay yeah. it does it doesn't fly you know and it gets older and it <laughs> ages and wrinkles up and dies and gets sick and da da ba 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 we get to hide now that's a very strange way to look at it all yeah right? But we eventually wake up, and you I think you just got a, a wake-up thing. And you are interpreting it as, oh, how impure am I? I would suggest, I would reframe that and say, hmm, how much purer could I be? In what sense? Well, you're recognizing... Ah, like, like, where can I go? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. It's, I was like, oh, I want to be this. Yeah. You know, it's, yeah. it's the, the beauty of it. Oh, my God. Okay. And so that's one of the things we're trying to do with our course. We're trying to, you know, yes. take take all these angers and griefs and guilts and stuff like that and, and reduce them and get them out of the way so that the true joy, the true power starts to bubble up. Okay. Yes. Yes. And yes. you just had a great experience about that. Now, well, I want to I want to ask you something because you you told me before we ever even recorded this mm -hmm. that you wanted me to help you with this problem you have as a result of this great experience with this client. Okay. Exactly. 
Yes. So I want to ask you something. I mean, I've been doing some reframing here with you and this kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> is it really your own impurities that you're sad about or, or envious about or whatever you want to call it? Or is it, my goodness, look at what I can really do with my life? I mean, that was sort of a reframe that I just did. Did it work or do you, is there more to go by? I think definitely uh, you kind of uh, shift me more towards look what's possible rather yeah. than what I have behind, right? Rather than all the difficulties I've been through, it's more about who, look, look, I already see the peak kind of thing. Yeah, okay, all right. That mountain, you know? Yeah, and, 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 and until you see it, um, you don't see it, okay? You see your own body, your own limitation. You probably still see that. You, you know, um, I, I have a, I have a belief. Okay, this is me having a belief, an impure belief because I'm not using all my power and all that stuff that I can't give birth to a baby. Okay, that <laughs> that that's that's a belief here in this dream. I can't give birth to a baby. Well, not that I want to frankly, okay? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not one of my goals in life. But there is in this place that belief, okay? And every every male that I know has it, and every female I know has it. They, Gary, you can't give birth to a baby, okay? Well, all right. So we don't even question the belief. That's the point. We don't even question the belief. It's just nobody's done it, da, 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 da. Well, if you open yourself up for a moment and think about that, and by the way, what I'm doing here is reframing with you. We might be, we might do some more with unseen therapists, but I want to reframe a little bit and see where you are or what they do for you. But if I was really in touch with all this beauty and this purity and this power, why couldn't I just open up my hands and there's a baby, okay? Well, nobody does that, so therefore you can't do it. Why couldn't I grow another arm if I wanted one, okay? Why couldn't I, you know, grow three more eyes so I could see better, two in the back of my head? Why couldn't I do that? Well, nobody's done it. The doctors will tell you it's impossible. So we don't even think about it. All right. Why couldn't uh, you live? You live in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. OK. Why couldn't I? I'm in California. We're probably. Eight, 10,000 miles apart. Why couldn't I just poof, leave here and poof, show up in your living room without an airplane and all that? Why couldn't I just transport myself? What? Why not? Well, nobody's yeah. done it. We don't believe it, you know, so we don't even think in that direction. Are you with me? Yes. Some time ago, one of our webinars, I brought up the um, the book, The uh, Life and Teachings of the Masters of the Far East. Did you happen to read yeah. that? I started. Yes, I, I have the glimpse and I'm I'm still on it. Okay. Well, that book was written in about an 1894 excursion to the Himalayas where the Supposedly, there are a bunch of Jesus-like people there that could do all these things. And it was all written out really fantastic. But these people thought nothing of doing what I'm just talking about. I mean, they could, it was just part of what they could do. And they would repeatedly, repeatedly say, there's nothing that we can do that you can't, except that you don't believe you can. Okay. I mean, that's one of the, one of the messages yeah. in all of that book. Okay. So where I come off on all of that is, no, I, I don't know how to give birth to a baby. Not that I even care. Okay. Um, well, but by the way, uh, 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 it's also the belief that I couldn't somehow just with my own desire change my whole body so that I could give birth. Okay. Yeah. Medicine, did, <clears throat> medicine doesn't know how to do it, at least like that. Okay. Um, yeah. And so on. So it's out of our belief system. It's not even there. Now, let me back up a second here. When I was a youngster, 
13, 14 years old, even before that. Like any little boy, I had, I loved to fantasize, particularly about baseball and doing well in baseball, you know, da, 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 hit home runs and you know, jump over things and all kinds of stuff, okay? Stuff that were really outside of anybody's belief system. If you ever told anybody about it, oh, grow up, you know, that's impossible, et cetera, you know. So. But I fantasized anyway about being some great baseball player. Well, I, w- I ended up being a good baseball player, but it, um, it took me, that dream, those fantasies, took me in a direction in this world. It went to football, and that got me into Stanford. And so all of that took me in a direction. That's the important point. The fantasies took me in directions. So what I've decided to do, this is recent, more recent, okay, is because there are all the, there's all these things, let's call it the purity you want to talk about and the potentials, that seed you talked about where it's all there and we really can do it. It's just outside of our belief systems, okay? I fantasize. It's a lot of fun about poof being from here to someplace else, okay? I, I fantasize about doing all kinds of things, things that are outside of our belief. I fantasize about talking, giving a, a talk in New York on this topic in English. And at the same time, I am also in various places in Europe, South America. I've been all kinds of places simultaneously speaking all these, speaking the same words in all these languages. Okay. I fantasize doing that. Now, have I done it? No. Will I be able to do it before I turn toes up, die? Maybe not. Will it open my belief system to the possibility? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now, maybe the resistance to getting there is too big for now. I don't know. But it's there. What I don't do is is beat myself up saying, oh, Gary, you're not there yet. Now, and here you are. You know, talking about OEFT and the unseen therapist and trying to teach people to get to places you haven't been. Your well, I have been in my one experience, but yes, you know. But, but what we're trying to do is move us in that direction. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. So anyway, I want to do a little testing with you, if I may. Mm-hmm. I want you to say a little sentence for me and tell me. On a, you've heard this before, but. On a scale of zero to 10, how true does it feel? What the emotional response? And that is, there's something wrong with me because I am impure. Say it. There's something wrong with me because I am impure. How true does that feel to you? Five. Okay. So what is wrong with you? Um, basically, uh, give me one second, okay? I need to uh, change my socks because I'm getting so hot when we're speaking that I need okay. to change my socks. <laughs> okay, well, I, I will I will pause the recording. Thank okay. you. All right. All right, so 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 we're back. Yes. And your t- your temperature is getting high. Yes, <laughs> I'm getting very warm. <laughs> Uh, because you feel threatened or because it's too exciting or what? I think it's positive. It's positive. Yeah. 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 In a positive way. Okay. But somehow, yes, I just needed to to, to change. Uh, so, yes, you asked me what is uh, wrong with me. Well, you said you were a five. So what makes it a five? Yes. Basically, uh, 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 after this experience, I was uh, in a way pushed somehow you know in a kind of strong way to do healing and uh, as those impurities became very visible to me i was very um it was easy right to do to do it because it was just right there in front of my face so i started to work on crucial issues and what crucial crucial crucial, crucial issues crucial okay issues yeah okay and uh, it seemed like I was revolving around my issues, you know, all those years. And then after this moment, it was like, oh, that's, that's, that's the main impurity. 
And uh, actually, I discovered uh, through some sessions, uh, because this experience happened uh, about two weeks ago. So, uh, you know, quite some time. And I think the most, uh, um, the, the, the center of, of that impurity that I, that I call is that um, I, am, I was very uh, angry with my mother and I rejected her because of that anger. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, all my life, I was uh, acting out of that anger. And this pattern, this kind of very specific relation has been then copied and multiplied in my whole life. Okay. All right. And the reason why I felt like when I called you, I felt so low is because I was in the process of, of, of healing that. And it seemed like a very scary place to go to because I would need to confront my um, wrong decision in a way that I made with my mother. Uh, it, is another way to say that you'd have to confront guilt you have regarding your mother? Well, I can see some tears starting right there. The guilt word got you a bit. Okay. Well, yes, yes. all right. Reframe time. But there's not a person. <laughs> there's not a person on this planet that doesn't carry around guilt. I don't know. I know lots of people. I don't know anybody who is free of guilt, including me. I would love to turn back the clock and redo a whole bunch of things, as would most people. So we carry around, well, you know, I didn't, I shouldn't have done that one. Why did I do that? <laughs> but we can sit here and giggle about it, but it's still, it's, 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 it's a weight. It's a weight. Okay. And now you have this experience with this client where something like that is, well, I'm going to say this, but you correct me because maybe you don't believe this one. Okay. Those guilty things just don't seem to be material. They're just stuff that happens in the world, in this world anyway. But there's such a vast beauty beyond that stuff. Why pay attention to it? How am I doing? I'm not there yet. Well, I know. Neither am I. That's yeah. the point. That's the point. Yeah. We're, we are getting there. We are working towards that. Okay. Yeah. The good news is you're working towards that. If you weren't doing that, you'd be like almost everybody else just dealing with it, you know, or living with it or whatever, and never, ever resolving it. Think for a moment about a guilt-ridden specific event regarding you and your mother. I uh, I was working on it. Like I said, it was a very intense two weeks because I was kind of, you know, I had to work on it. It was just unbearable. And um, I, I, actually, I had a lot of help from uh, George, uh, who you know from the course. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. George. George uh -huh. and also Veli. Uh, uh, yeah, um, Veli. Uh, yeah. Who, are, yeah. uh, who are in my group. So we uh, kind of discovered, um, especially like recently with George, that um basically uh there were two specific events first uh, a specific event was when i was uh, and i can only presume that this happened i i can't be 100 percent sure but um there is this story that my sister tells me that when my mother was pregnant with me my, my sister was about seven and she said that if it's going to be a girl i will look after her and my mother agreed. She said, okay, if it's a girl, you will look after her because she really wanted a sister. And somehow when I ask unseen therapist, the age uh, is five months fetus. It seems like that was the, the time that this happened. And I knew I was a girl and I knew that my mother said, okay, I will give you up in a way. That's how I interpreted it and I felt so abandoned and unimportant that 
uh, my mother said that. And then, so that's one specific event. And the second is that um, I have problems with my gums, uh, as I probably mentioned to you. Yeah. And my mother was saying to me uh, that I was biting her nipples so much that she needed to finish uh, breastfeeding as quickly as possible. Uh, and she was giving me to my dad. So I would look for the nipples, but I would get a nipple without milk. So slowly, I would stop wanting nipple because I would, you know, um, somehow change idea about the, nip the nipple or something. Mm -hmm. But there was this specific event that I seem it seems very intense that I'm biting my mother's nipples with anger. You know, that I'm so angry about that moment of, of, of rejection. And it seems like my whole relationship with mother, my mother, was that I wanted her love, but I was angry with her at the same time. And I, in a way, I wanted to express that anger, but I couldn't because she's the source of my life, everything I, I depend on her, so I can't express my mother, uh, anger with my mother. I can't kind of say what I really think. And this, this feeling of, I want to say anger, but I can't. And, you know, very kind, this kind of restraining is, is the story of my life. And actually, um, the gums and the recession, uh, uh, receding gums, is that an inability to express anger. What was the word that, that is what? Recession. Yeah, it reset. you said is gone? Or what did you say? Uh, inability to express anger. Okay, all right. Uh, all right. My gums are receding, and according to uh, New German Medicine, uh, the, the receding gums is inability to say what I really think, inability to express anger. Oh, okay. Well, German New Medicine has got its own view, okay? Um, and maybe it's right, maybe it isn't. But to, to me, from what you're saying, um, the real issue is you have an emotional response regarding your mother from way, 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 way back, which hasn't been resolved yet. Yeah. Did I say that? Okay. Yeah. As you were discussing this bit with the nipples and the anger and, and so on, were you getting intense about it? Yes, very much, yeah. What number were you getting to? I think I was getting a 10. Uh, when Even with the nipple, huge anger, huge anger. Okay. Of the two specific events, both of which, my perception, is a form of abandonment, okay? Um, which of those stands out most intense for you? The nipples or the giving up, giving you up? Um, it's very strange because I, I worked a lot on the five-month fetus, so it seems lower, but somehow it seems like it's the center because that's okay. when the problem right. started. Yeah. Well, yeah, the farther back you go, the... Okay. Yeah. All right. So... Um, so you're saying this, the first specific event, the five months fetus thing and your mother, your mother saying, OK, if it's a girl to your older sister, you get to raise her and this kind of thing. OK, I'm your perception being I'm giving her up. You up. Yeah. Yeah. And all this time when I was working on it, it's so intense and it's so scary that I had to do everything disassociated. As, a, as an observer. Oh, okay. So if I ask you to go back and vividly imagine that you're going to have some difficulty time doing that because of the dissociation. Yes, yes. I, I All this time I've been doing it disassociated. It was way too scary. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's spend a little time with unseen therapists, you and I, on that specific event. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know exactly where we're going. <clears throat> I never know until we get there. 
Mm-hmm. But I'm getting the notion one thing we need to do is um, do a little little more reframing. We'll do that before we actually call unseen therapist in. Um, but we're going to want to try to do it so we can ease into the idea of being associated. We want to, if we can, take the edge off first. Okay. All right. All right. Now, does that does that thought give you tremors? I, I a little bit, but somehow I'm I'm getting better. Okay. All right. Well, the reframe, I, which seems appropriate for me, is let's go back and. Put yourself in your mother's shoes at that point. All right. All right. Now, I don't know your mother. I can imagine some things, and here you have to correct me if I'm not on point. All right. I can imagine at this point, she already has it. One child, your sister? Three. She has three three children. Okay. Well, three I'm children. Sure. You're the fourth. Okay. Well, okay. Now I'm imagining here. Okay. So I, I can be wrong, but I can imagine a mother with three children. And I know what it's like to raise three because I have three children and I'm not the mother. Okay. I'm off working and mother is home doing mother stuff and the kids are crying and they don't behave. <laughs> All that stuff that goes on. Plus the fact there's a financial thing with another child and and so on. Okay. So it's a yet another child. And here we have an, uh, an older sister who says, oh, if it's a girl, I would love to have her be my doll. I, I just made that up. Yeah. I would love to, love to raise her. I'm hearing mother saying, what a good experience for my older child. Okay. And that's probably going to be a good a good experience for my new baby because I'm not going to have the time, energy, or whatever to really give what I have to give as a mother for four children. I'm having a problem with three. Now I'm making this up, but am I on target? Probably, probably, yes. Especially because my mother uh at the time uh was very abused by my father. So, oh, and I got to put up with all that abuse and a yeah. fourth child. Yeah. How much can I take? And my daughter, my older daughter, wants to do this, and it could be good for her. I'm an easy sell, okay? So, yeah, you can take care of her. What a wonderful idea. Now, I'm I'm hearing that from your mother's point of view. I guess we don't know, do we? It's um, the, the the sadness is that I feel not important, you know that I know all this, but am I not important to you to yeah, take care of okay. me yourself? Yeah. yeah, okay. I don't care what you have to go. Through. Well, the mother could say she doesn't care about me. Yeah, all, yeah, absolutely. All, <laughs> all I got to put up with, and I'm doing I'm doing the best I can. That's an important phrase, I think. I'm doing the best I can, given my own resources, my own abilities, and so on. Does that ring home, or is that just me talking? Are you a mother yourself? No. Well, can you imagine being a mother to one, let alone three or four? Four is. <laughs> well, put yourself in her shoes. There you are a mother with three children and all those responsibilities. Here comes a fourth child. You're being abused by your own husband. Constantly, yeah. And somebody comes along and says, God, I would just love to take care of you, this new daughter. I would love to do that. I would really like to do that. And I'm going to say, no, that arrogant little person in there wants me to love her and you can't do it. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> I'm being a little light about that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. 
But the, the, I was sad because I just really wanted to, you know, have her warmth and closeness, you know? Sure. It, it was because I loved her so much. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you want her to reciprocate. Got it. Got it. You want her to do that. And you're very young and you don't know what she's going through, nor do you care at five months uh, in five months yeah. old in, in the womb. Right. It's like that I didn't even need her to give me a lot of attention just to allow me to be next to her. Because yeah. my, my sister later was uh, really taking care of me mostly. So okay. I just, you know, I just wanted to be next to my mother, you know, even if she doesn't pay much attention. But Is your mother living now? No, she died 14 okay. years ago. Yeah. All right. Well, let's bring an unseen therapist, okay? There's a little reframing going on there, but we'll 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 just see what happens, okay? Okay. So take a nice deep breath, you know, just kind of relax a little bit and then recall your loving moment. Just just to align with unseen therapists as best you can. Nod your head whenever you're there. Okay. Now let's go back to five months in the womb, fetus you. Somehow or other, you're so brilliant, you can overhear a conversation between your mother. Should I, should I try to be associated? Is, should you be what? Associated, like uh, you mentioned. Your choice. Your choice. Take care of yourself. Let's see if the association doesn't show up sooner or later. Okay. We okay. want to we want to keep that in mind as a good place to go. Okay. Okay, I can try. Okay. Well, it's up to you. It's up to you. Okay. It's up to you. So there you are. Fetus state. This conversation is going on. You may not understand words, but you do understand feelings we know you react you know in the womb to what's going on with with mother okay medical science has known that for years so what's going on and to you this conversation where your older sister really wants to take care of you and your mother going oh good <laughs> um is interpreted by young you as she doesn't want me she is abandoning me. She's giving me up to somebody else. That does not feel good. And so Unseen Therapist understands that. She's listening. She's always listening, always guiding and so on. And so what she does in your imagination now is to enter into the womb and can you in an associated way be in the womb at five months and recognize the presence of unseen therapists can you do that or is that too far yes i can all right and she's going to speak to you for the moment and she's going to say you know what your mother really does love you, but she's got so much on her plate. How is she going to handle all of this? And now she has an opportunity to do a loving thing. It is a, in her perception now, it's a loving thing. And so Unseen Therapist says, Ella, at five months, you're not really able to understand this well, so I'm going to help you do it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work with you. There we are both inside your mother's womb. Okay. And Unseen Therapist asks you, would I be correct in understanding that the biggest need your mother has at this moment is love. Would that be a true statement? Yes. Okay. 
So why don't we, rather than say, I'm being abandoned, I'm being disadvantaged here, why don't we just share love with her? And I'm going to help you, says Unseen Therapist. The two of us inside your mother's womb are going to just start generating love. And I'll help you. I'll, I got all the, all the love you can imagine. You're a beginner at this, but I'm going to help you. I'm going to put my arms around you. I'm going to fill you full of love. And we're going to radiate that just like your client, male client, has done. We're going to radiate that to your mother. I see you crying. I gather you're associated. Yes? You nod your head. Yeah, that's okay. Is that a good thing or a bad thing at this moment? It's still intense, but but I can handle it. Okay. So you just want to share love. You just want to share. See, love is, is best when shared. You don't just send your mother some love, like send her an envelope with some love in it and Put it in the mailbox, okay? It's best when you share it and you radiate it with her. Now, maybe she isn't able to give you the same level of love that you need and desire as a young child, but you can generate it from within. An unseen therapist is now going to ask you, to the extent you can, okay, it's okay if you can't, to take over for the moment. Talk to your mother. Assume she can hear you. What do you have to say? Anything? Are you angry at her? Are you loving her? Tell me what goes on. Tell her what's going on. I, I see how much love you needed. I'm sorry. Can you say it different? I can go on. I, I see how much love you needed. Okay, all right. You needed so much love, and you didn't have it. And it yeah. makes me so sad that you needed it so much. Well, let me ask you, this is Gary speaking now. Let me ask you, based on your understanding of things. I'm talking emotionally as well as logically, just based on all of that. Is there anything in your belief system that allows her, your mother, to hear that now? Can you repeat the question? Is there anything in your belief system, your current belief system, that allows you to believe your mother can hear and understand the love going on now, even yes, though yes. E even though her body is gone. Yeah, I believe that. I believe that. Okay. Well, never late than never, or better late than never, I guess. So, all right. So we're radiating love for mother. Now, unseen therapist says, yes, that helps. Oh, yes, does that help? But you're still having, you're still maybe having some abandoned feeling. What's wrong with me? How come I can't be close to my mother the way I want to? And unseen therapist says, well, I tell you what. Why don't we just represent that in the standard way within OEFT as an unwanted vibration in your body? Ta 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 ta, -ta like that. You don't need to make your body vibrate. We're just going to imagine it in that way. We're going to portray, represent that abandoned emotion, which is been with me for so many decades and makes me feel impure and all of that there's an unwanted vibration in your body we'll put it around your heart 
You don't have to make your heart vibrate now. That's not the point. It's an imaginary way to represent it. And so, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta is the imagination. That's the abandoned feeling, the abandoned emotion which you still carry around and still replay at your you're now decades beyond that. And then I, the unseen therapist, will see it. I understand it at a level different than you do. I understand you don't need to carry it around. It is expensive. And if we can get rid of it, you're going to be a little more pure, at least in your own perception. So in your imagination, unseen therapist sends a gentle healing, cooling breeze that, that comes to your body, surrounds your heart with the unwanted vibration. And that emotion, that unwanted vibration cannot survive in all that love. It can't do it. So in your imagination, imagine that breeze surrounding it and the vibration that is the emotion goes ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Now we'll do that again. Feeling so abandoned. I want my mother's love. I'm, I'm not even born yet. And I feel abandoned already. I'm not able to make these interpretations. I don't understand how much love she has. I don't, I don't understand that she's doing the best she can, allowing the older sister to take some responsibility. Thinking she's helping everybody, even though she may know, it's just beyond my capacity. Ta-ta, 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 here comes the breeze. Ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. All right, now the thing to do is to repeat that yourself once, twice, three or four times, more times if you want until you've gone as far with it as you think you can go, whatever that is, okay? Here's the abandoned feeling, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. The breeze, ta-ta, 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 ta-ta. Just repeat that. Just repeat it. And whenever you've gone as far as you can go, just open your eyes and, and we'll talk. There is no grades. You don't get an A or a C or anything like that. It's just whatever happens, happens. And we'll talk when you're done. Go ahead. I'm not sure what's happening, but I'm growing. <laughs> I'm, I'm growing. Well, well whatever I, happens, yeah, that's yes. fine. Yeah, go ahead.
Are those happy tears or some other tears? I see myself grown and hugging my mother. But I feel very unworthy. You feel unworthy. Okay. She's trying to hug me, but I feel so unworthy because of my anger. Okay. Well, all right. Let's address that unworthy anger thing, if we could. You're feeling that now or as a five-month-old fetus? Uh, when, when I, I, this, it transformed and I, I'm grown and my mother's trying to hug me and, and I'm, I'm trying to run away. You're trying to run away because you're not worthy. I, you don't, you don't deserve it. Uh, yes. Okay. Because you've been carrying around some anger. Yes. All right. The words hurt. And behind all that is you've caused your mother some problems? Uh, no. No. I was just judgmental, I guess. You were just what yourself? Judgmental. I think I was oh, judging okay. her. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Is she judging you? I don't know. We have been very distant. Okay. Well, all right. All right. Let's um, gonna shift metaphors on you for the moment. Okay. Let's imagine you at your current age, the one who is still, because you, you have current tears, is still feeling your mother's, or you're still feeling unworthy. Okay. Mother's even trying to hug you, but no, 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 I can't expect, I can't accept this, okay. So here you have that, you're carrying that around. Would you agree with me that it's expensive? Very. Very. Okay, very. All right. All right. So you and Unseen Therapist are now going to go and sit upon a nice, beautiful, white, fluffy cloud. And you're going to float up in the air and you're going to hover over a volcano. And you look down from the cloud with the comfort of unseen therapy beside you and the safety and the forgiveness and all of that. And you look down into the, into the volcano and you see the bubbling lava down there. There is no eruption, but it's bubble, 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 bubble. And this represents your unworthiness. It represents all the I don't deserves you've ever collected for yourself. Okay. It can erupt. It can erupt. Yeah, it can erupt. But you're sitting there way up there in the air above the volcano observing it. You're dissociated in that sense. Okay. There it is down there. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Okay. And so from off of that bubbling comes a sort of steam that comes up out of the volcano and comes up to the cloud, makes the cloud larger, because you know, clouds are nothing but mist that come from below. Okay. And the cloud gets so big that it starts to rain, let go of this moisture, 
after it has cooled down in the cloud and falls back down into the volcano. But it's not rain like water. It's rain like love. It comes up into the cloud, gets transformed between you and unseen therapists into love. Let's call it not just love. Let's call it love and understanding. Understanding that we can interpret things as they are not. And everybody does it. So love rains back down onto the bubbling lava. And it starts to cool it. All the anger down there, the unworthiness, the deserving. And so here comes some more steam as we start to cool it. It's being quenched. Up it goes into the cloud. Cloud transforms it. Here comes some more love rain down into the cloud. And the bubble, bubble, bubble goes rub, 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 not so much. And as it, as it extinguishes still more, the steam comes up, gets purified, to use your term, in the cloud. And you're part of the purification because you're understanding this. You're way up there in a dissociated way, watching all this bubble bubble within you. You are the volcano. Come floating up and ex being extinguished by understanding. You're too young to make these decisions. Way too young to make these decisions. Who would rely on you at any decision at five months within the fetus, okay? Who would rely on you at age one or two or three or five or eight or 20 for that matter? So do that again and do that another time or two or three or whatever, okay? Let the steam come up, transform it into loving rain. The bubbling gets lighter and lighter. Keep doing it until the bubbling just has a sort of a surface cap on it. It just sort of solidifies and maybe even turns to ice. You know, or some neutral thing. Ah! No, instead of ice or some neutral thing, let it turn into a playground. And who's playing in the playground? But little you. And maybe your sister. And, if you can, your mother. Maybe the rest of your siblings. Why don't you put your gums in there, too, while we're at it, okay? Can you imagine your gums playing hopscotch? <laughs> a little humor there, okay. But do that a time or two or three or whatever, and then open your eyes, and we'll, we'll talk about what's going on.
All right. So were you able to follow along okay or were there competing thoughts or what? I I I was uh, I I didn't get sorry. I didn't get to the playground moment because You didn't I, I'm sorry, you didn't I, what? I, I I didn't get to the playground moment. Okay. Because I needed to it needed to rain more uh -huh. and it uh -huh. was uh, cooling it down so I just stayed with that few few more times all right all right well i'm disappointed i wanted a playground moment <laughs> i can go back <laughs> well yeah, yeah well, well no don't bother because you're not worthy i don't feel it so much <laughs> well that was a test you know i got a, i know a i know big you. smile okay <laughs> Well, you saw me coming, but <laughs> yes, <laughs> yeah. I've read the lessons, so yeah. I know. <laughs> um, so go back to age five months as a fetus. Run that whole specific event with a conversation with your mother. And your sister in an associated way, if you can. And tell me if there's, give me a number for the intensity. Um, there is this feeling that I uh, am not worthy to, to be there. Um, like uh, not so much feeling rejected anymore, but that I am not good enough to 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 be there. I don't know. All right. With my mother, like I don't deserve to be close to my mother somehow in her okay. belly. Okay. I don't I... know what I've done, but I feel that I'm I'm not worthy to be here. Okay. Is that unworthiness the same level as it was before we started, or can you tell? Uh, it's much less. Uh, it's about three now. Did we ask you what it was at the beginning? Was it a nine uh, or a ten? Or... It, it was overwhelming. It was overwhelming, so I'm sure it was at least an eight. Okay. Well, what we did here, I, uh, I'm going to give you a suggestion, okay? We spent a fair amount of time with unseen therapists. We spent a fair amount of time reframing your mother and, and so on. So, but particularly those sessions we did, I think if you, since it's being recorded, if you go back and I would look, I would look at all the reframes as well. Okay. But particularly run those, um, sessions we did with unseen therapists this with the same thing we did before just run them again i mean the same topics the same specific event and mm -hmm. all of that run them again maybe a time or two chances are good the second or third time you go through that new bells will go off for you new understandings new releases etc that's my experience anyway okay but you can also take other specific events, you know, like the one, the biting of the breast type thing, okay? Yeah. You can put that in there. You can just plug it in. It takes a little skill to plug it, plug it in, but you can, you, it's a doable thing once you get used to it. And then take some other ones and plug them in. And my guess is you'll get, you'll get more release and more release still. But I think we have to let it sit for a little while. I get yes. the impression. I get the impression this was not the easiest thing on your energy system. <laughs> am I, am I right about that? It, it it was the first time I have done association uh, in in those events with my mother. Okay, do you think you'll be okay doing association when you repeat it? 
Yes, definitely, uh, because the intensity has gone lower. So yeah. the the most kind of uh, scary part, um, I think I think it's over. Okay. Well, yeah. all right. Uh, if it isn't over and you need help, let me know. Okay. Okay. But, but otherwise, I think I think we got a good start here. Anyway. Very good start. Very good start.